All right, at 6 o'clock, let's call the meeting to order. And everybody's here except for John, who will be here about 6.30. We've got the MSBA um, capital visit, so. And our first item up is our roll call and pledge allegiance. opportunity for visitors to address the board. Do you have anybody here? All right. Moving on, our next item is acknowledgments. Uh, first is Doug Bruggeman, a school climate and organization of Mr. Severson fundraiser, uh, Channel 2 staff for live streaming events, and winter advisors, coach, coaches, athletes, and participants. For everybody, for all that you do. And our next item is administrative reports. And we're going to start with the achievement and integration with <coughs> Mrs. Walker. Hello, uh, Mr. Brueggemann and I are going to uh, do an update for you on our new plan that we're doing for the 23 to 26 school year. So these are three year plans. Uh, right now, we're on the final year of our current plan, which runs from July of 20 to June 30th of 23. Our focus tonight will be on our new plan and what that will look like. You might remember that we reported in November on our numbers from 21, 22, because we're always getting, we're always kind of a year behind on getting our information for the prior year. So achievement and integration, there's three types of goals. There's closing achievement gaps, equitable access to effective and diverse teachers, and racial and economic integration. This is a working plan. This is something that MDE wants us to be able to keep looking at, evaluating, improving. And so this is just the, the start for us that goes to our leadership, our teachers and our staff, and our partnering districts. So MCA reading is the first goal that we have, and that is to increase our proficiency rates by 3% per year for the student group of our free and reduced lunch students. So I listed the current year so you could kind of see where we're at. So 21, 2021, we were at 37.5%, and last year we were at 38.3% for our free and reduced um, MCA reading. We will get our results from this year in the fall. And right now we used last year's baseline. And what we'll do is when we get our new um, results back, we'll make adjustments with that. So that was, we're doing 3% of, of that rate. Any questions? So these are some of the strategies that we use. We have uh, core literacy support. We have that in both buildings um, at the elementary school. We have Mrs. Haugrud working with integrating students with diverse backgrounds. There's differentiated instruction and targeted interventions. Uh, teachers touching base with all students daily, whether it's small groups or individual students collaborating them 
working with students with the different skills that they're going to need and then planning together what kind of resources and interventions can be done to help those students. In the high school, uh, Mrs. Cork works with the Language Arts 180 course using that uh, Read 180 Universal software program. She also has a Young Literature elective course which works on some of the skills with reading and analyzing and all of the things that go into literacy. Um, this is mm -hmm. um, that first row there. That's just a little snapshot of just to give the board members a little idea of what's going on in each building, just what it means. Um, a lot of this now goes back once the plan is in place to the principals and the teachers to create the plan to move us to that next level. Uh, both buildings have an after-school biking uh, student success program. Um, the other thing that we do for a strategy is our family engagement initiatives. Right now, one of the things at the elementary is scheduled conferences with parents, and there's also family nights, and translators are available as needed. And so our target for that strategy is just 90% or more elementary parents will continue to attend conferences. Uh, for the high school, some of the family engagement initiatives that we have, orientation for students and parents going into grades seven and nine, our conferences, our school counselor also has different nights, uh, topics that she'll put together to get information out. We also have information on social media, our website and our district newsletter just trying to get information out regularly about all of the good things happening here, keeping parents informed, making sure they have conference dates ahead of time that they're getting the information they need. One of the things that we did at the high school is just identified another student group. We were trying to think of ways that um, we could engage with family but also have some early interventions, additional interventions for students needing academic support. There are things in place already. This was one more thing. What would be a way that we could get the parents involved of the students that have these anastic conferences? And so we did start with that last year, and we had 36% of those parents show up for conferences, and this year it went up to 40. So we just want to keep that going. We'd like to get it to 45%. And just looking at that, um, I think everybody can agree, uh, and the studies show the more family involvement in the uh, um, academic careers of their, their students, the better chances we're going to have to move us to that next level. So it's a, it's a constant thing. It's just, again, that was just a quick little couple things that we're doing, but we are constantly looking at ways to um, get parents to be a part of their child's education and know about their child's education. Sometimes it's as simple as do you know the login and how to get to Skyward so you can check your kids' grades. You know, it's some, sometimes it's that simple. Our second goal is our MCA reading. And again, we're looking at the same student group of our free and reduced lunch students. So you can see in 2021, we were at 28.3%. Last year we were at 33.3, so again, we're starting with that as our baseline, but we will make adjustments once we have our uh, scores back this fall. So the strategies for that are very similar. Um, there's a few things that are different. Um, you can see on the core math support, there's IXL software and new math curriculum that the Viking Elementary will be getting next year. There's intervention groups over here. So Mrs. Reisen is one of the uh, staff that has um, math, a math class for those students that need that extra help. Otherwise, we're really, those other two areas are kind of the same. And what we will do too is just kind of keep looking um, if there's any other groups that we're missing and how can we uh, reach out and how can we keep improving that. Another thing about um, the plan is it's kind of like a joint plan with uh, a number of other um, schools that are involved in the building of this plan. Uh, Becky does a phenomenal job, kind of like the Wizard of Oz, 
you know, um, <laughs> the person behind the curtain, um, that's Becky. She's running the, a lot of what happens with A and I. Um, by the way, uh, that show should be PG at least 17. <laughs> Little kids should not watch. The wizard a wizard bat. Flying bat, a flying monkey, so come on. <laughs> it scares me. So goal three is access to effective and diverse teachers. So every year we do report um, a review, do a review and report our teachers as far as experience, licensure, and advanced degrees. The other thing that we started a few years ago is just trying to kind of grow our staff within. And so the Intro to Education course was created and so we're continuing that course and what we'd like to see here is just the percentage of students of diversity enrolled will remain at 62.5% or more. That's what we've had the last couple of years. Um, staff development this year, or for, excuse me, the next three years, we're thinking would be great to just go with that wonderful platform we already have with our seven habits. And um, Franklin Covey does have some resources um, around culture and race, ethnicity, poverty, and um, so we're looking into that just to enhance some of the leadership training that we're already getting through them. So our, our goal would be 100% of teachers to participate and 70 to 90% of non-certified staff to receive the information. Now when you look at um, the diversity and things like that, uh, you know, we hire a lot of um, former students and we have that um, happening a lot. Uh, one of the things that has always been in the back of my mind, it's gonna be cool when we finally get to that point where we do hire um, a person of diversity to be a teacher here. We can see the movement and it, it's, it's a process. It's a, you know, it's the American dream kind of thing. Um, we have a process now where we have a lot of our paras and um, our help, um, our administrative assistants and stuff like that uh, that are of a diverse background. And that just, man, that really makes a huge impact um, in our school, is that to have those role models. So every step that we take, <coughs> having Rudy Martinez being our business manager, um, he, he make, it makes a difference. It might, you know, not only on the financial side of things, but just for others to see, oh, hey, I could do that and move themselves in that direction. So hopefully that diverse teacher uh, or a person of diversity teaching here will be a, a, a really a fun day to celebrate. So goal number four is kind of where I, I spend a lot of my time. Um, and this is where we do the partnership with the seven other schools that are part of our kind of group. We're identified as a, um, we're, we're almost kind of like have to do this kind of type of a thing because of our diversity. Um, we're in the hub, as we know, of a very um, non-diverse area of Minnesota. And because of our population, the um, state of Minnesota says, hey, you have um, some great resources that we'd like to tie other schools into. And so my job kind of with this is um, to make those connections with other schools. And so we try to part participate or join in with these other schools. Um, one, to have a cultural immersion event or activity with each one at least. Um, to facilitate ongoing uh, communication and collaboration with these groups. And our third one, host activities and events as needed. So some of the examples are um, here in Pelican Rapids. Our big plan for next year now, this is a part of the movement forward, is to have a cultural fair um, where we're going to get different groups uh, a lot of them are going to be based off of Pelican Rapids, but I'd like to tie into some of our other schools that have more of a Native American population or maybe Asian from another part and have them come to Pelican Rapids, go to stations where they'll find out about different aspects of people's culture. And so they'll move around from spot to spot within our school and find out about, hey, what's Ramadan? Um, what's Pai Bitter? Uh, what is a Chinese New Year? What is uh, a powwow? In fact, um, one of our next big events is to take our students to a powwow sponsored in Detroit Lakes. Um, 
So we have those kind of events going on. Uh, our kids went to a Chinese New Year's celebration. Our sixth graders went to Battle Lake for that. Uh, we are partnering with Detroit Lakes um, with our um, educational class with uh, Cody Schaefer and having communication between those two. So, um, Fergus Falls, we in Underwood joined together with our Spanish class for a cultural trivia Olympics. Crazy, I bring a group of kids over once a month to um, mentor some of their elementary kids. Holly has set up in the past a global foods kind of a group with us. And uh, Native American culture has also been a part of our connection with Perm. So the goal and the idea is that our students are connected with kids from other parts of our area, but more importantly, other parts of this area get to know our, our ethnic diversity. So um, coming up then is uh, what we want to accomplish with this, and it's really um, increased comfort level of people that interact with different groups. Um, just heard a speaker talk about how um, a lot of students go to college for the first time, and that might be the first time they meet somebody of color, you know, and um, how it, it's, it's different here. You know, you, we have that, we intermix. Uh, I've heard from numerous kids over the years how they go to college and it's, uh, they walk down the street and, or campus and they see somebody with hijab and it's nothing and their classmates are like, wow, this guy is kind of, and okay, they know this stuff and what a, what a great comfort level that is for them. Um, so we, we look for that and then change the perceptions and understanding of others to diverse people. That um, differences doesn't mean it's, it's wrong. Okay, it's just different. So ultimately, we want the percent of students who uh, um, feel more comfortable, basically, around people of ethnic diversity, um, their comfort level will increase by 5%. So we start with 60% of the people on the survey say, you know what, I feel comfortable. Well, next year we want you know, to go to 65% say, because of my experiences, I feel more comfortable. So. That's, that's it, right? That's it. Okay, any um, questions <coughs> that you have for us? This is the plan that um, we need to have approved by the board so that then our principals and teaching staff can dive into moving us towards that next goal. Any questions? I have a question. Yep. Um, just two questions, actually. So um, how, when you talk about the events with the other schools, um, have our students given feedback on those events and how, how they've experienced it? And, um, we do polls with our well, surveys with um, all the students that are involved. Uh, as far as what will the you know, students input, like that cultural fair, that will be really student driven, uh, where it's gonna be, uh, all right, here's what we want to do. We want to share culture. What do you want to share? Who, you know, what, what can you come up with? Okay, this is gonna be your room, this is gonna be your 15 minute moment to share something. We kind of have that aspect of it. Um, the uh, students actually, because uh, we were kind of going back and forth, do you want to continue to this mentorship program with Crazy? And I had a number of students that expressed, yes, we'd like to. So. We continue that. So we look for events that um, are mutually beneficial is really what we're kind of going to there. Is that kind of what you're looking for? Yeah, 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 that and um, just along with the, in creating the plan with the, um, the engagement with the community. And so in how are we ensuring like diverse feedback and input in the plan? We are looking at get, making sure we have representation from all different cultures, and so that's a piece that we're just continuing to add and work with. Okay. So we have some now, but we would like to also get more out of the community as well, and just make sure that they have that opportunity for uh, input and feedback. One of the two things I think happened with the a and um, of course COVID kind of set it back a little bit, but we had a, 
a lot of turnover over the last few years, even right in the mix of COVID. Um, I think Becky's done a great job. We're streamlining things. We're trying to answer all those kind of questions. Mm -hmm. what, do we, what does this look like and how can we do it better? And we're moving in that direction. And like we said, it's a, like next year we'll come and Becky's constantly talking to the people in the cities. Um, hey, can we do this? Is this fit into our plan? Um, because new ideas are constantly being brought in. And so I think it's really a flexible, um, moving kind of type of a, a, a deal. Because mm -hmm. even the events that we're doing, we're, we're constantly looking for, um, like this year, one of the great example is um, cultural immersion events. We just decided, okay, can we do cultural immersion events? So you're doing this in your school. Do you want to invite some other students from other schools? We're doing this. I invite you know all the collaboratives, send kids. Um, you're doing this here. Can we send kids? So that it just doesn't put all the burden on us. It's more that collaborative. So exactly, we're looking for more input from the other schools. We're looking for more input from our our people. Okay. And I think that's my question, but I'm just trying to wrap my head around in the in the creation of the plan is like my mantra of nothing about us without us. Mm -hmm. And then so if we're creating these experiences and our, our, our diverse folks um, giving us input on that plan. Yeah. And those, having those and other I, perspectives. And I think I think that's what we have changed to with the cultural immersion events like this. Mm -hmm. I think that really opens up the door well for that student voice to come in and you know just the the people from outside hey we would like people to know this or hey can we share um kin sierra in, in with you know if they come in and say we'd really like to show a kin sierra dance can we do that oh that'd be awesome okay that kind of stuff is what we are definitely going to be looking for the other thing we shifted is we probably had 15 or 20 activities <coughs> that our students were supposed to be involved in from everybody else's activities in their plans and that is not good for students to be out of school that much that's not efficient so that was the other piece that we were trying to do is streamline let's offer that cultural fair so we can bring some people in and just really maximize maximize the resources that are already out there i think the cultural fair is going to fit in really well with what you're talking about yeah. because it's going to be all about you know, hey, man, what do you want to share with your culture? Who wants to do it? Let's get together and figure it out. The other thing it does is it lets students experience our school culture. You're walking down the halls and you just see, wow, this is awesome. You know, it. I think that would be a good thing too. We thought we would kind of uh, space out where some of our booths are. Hey, yes. Yeah, good question. No, I mean, I have the questions. I just, see my brain is out of that all right, thank you, Mrs. Mackey, Mr. Burton. Appreciate it. Next on the agenda is multi-use building, Mr. Steves. Is that your own building? Mm -hmm. oh. It's working. Is it? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not going to be right now. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
these two are the bathrooms that would be open most of the time there for the uh, trailer. There are handicap accessible bathrooms. On the other side of that, <coughs> excuse me, on the, on the north side of this building would be the warning house area. And it also has some facilities that we would use it in the fall for like um, the refing. Uh, referees um, also has a couple of bathrooms and showers in there so they can use that and not have to come back to the school. <coughs> then we move down, we would have the women's restroom. We have it so we can enter from either side so visitors and uh, home team don't have to intermingle at the door. So we can uh, have the easier access. This layout is basically as many stalls as what you would see in our new, newer bathrooms in the leaders' gym area. So this is one of those. Eight stalls, six on either end. So you come in, use it, you don't have to travel all the way through it, you can come back. Um, same with the men's, um, six on either end. This middle area is mechanical area for furnace, water heater, uh, plumbing, stuff like that. Moving down, uh, this is the uh, storage area for track equipment. Everything is needed out there, football stuff. There's also a bathroom in there, which there currently is now in, uh, in that facility. Then moving down to the east is our concession area. So our concession area is quite a bit bigger, which is needed. For those of you who have ever worked in there, I think you'll really appreciate a storage area on that north end. So what would, the plan would be, it's like trucks can come in, loop around, and this is a larger walk-in door. I think it's a 44 inch door. Then they can just drop their, their goods in there. And then um, there's not a door between just a, a couple walls to separate it. So then you have your storage and then your sales area. This is not a food prep area, so we don't have to make it like all stainless steel like our kitchen. Um, but we do have a uh, three compartment wash sink, hand washing sinks, ton of outlets and counter space. Um, we, we will set it up with uh, counters that will install that can be moved because uh, you know, we think it probably should be used once or twice and then uh, figure out what works, what doesn't. Um, a lot of the stuff from the, from the current one will go in there um, and there, there's a few things that will get launched out. But on this end we'll have a four foot overhang over the uh, two windows, actually the whole width. Like I said, in this end will be the uh, 15 foot. Want to go to the next one? Questions on this while we're on that? I went over that pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. What were the dimensions of the warming house part? Um, I'm not going to be able to read it. Just all 27, 27 by um, about 30. Yeah, so it's quite a bit bigger than that little shed that they have up there. It, that's also, um, there's a lot of skates that will store in there. I apologize, what's the overall size of the building? 40 by, the footprint will be 40 feet wide, 115 feet long. Okay. The building itself enclosed is 100. And then you add the, the overhang, actually 119 with the two overhangs. And this one, <coughs> the picnic tables will be underneath the overhang on this end of the building then? Yep. Okay. On the next picture that will uh, that will show that end and then you can really see that. Okay. So yeah, this is a side <coughs> view, a lot of doors, a lot of doors. Um, the Chauncey Martin sign is going to go on there. This is on the east side and this would be the north side with the one big garage door for the team uses it before and after. Um, also a shelter area if we have any climate weather for the teams, so. And that's a pretty good rendering on how it will look. I think it turned out really <coughs> nice looking. Um, <coughs> with our orange and black colors, black is the new tan. Um, and if you're around here in the Key Pine area, era, everything was tan, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then with orange, you, you gotta be careful with how much orange you use because it can get really bold. But I like the look of them just adding a little splash. This line is actually a uh, J channel that will divide the bottom metal to the top. 
the bottom one you uh, put like a wings coating that's the area that kind of takes the beating so if you need to replace a, a piece of steel that's only a three foot high piece and then that we can create that that border line this is the uh charge <coughs> money sign um, they integrated that nicely into there with a couple poles in and then that will help support that we have the lettering which all been re um, powder coated we have to paint the uh the bigger part of the sign yet it was too big to fit in the corner but we can get it to fit 10 foot sidewalls gives the building a taller feel a little bigger feel um we will have black more of a shiny black roof more of a flat black on the on the sides and obviously you would have a that lock through uh, fence would be right you can keep that on. The county will provide us with a uh, bike repair station. I don't know if you've seen the ones along the trail or like down at the by the old senior center. <coughs> it's a little stand that has an air pump, tools chained to it, stuff like that. Um, they'll provide that. Uh, I think um, this court so somebody was talking about you know, getting a <coughs> grant for some uh yeah we actually had a meeting yesterday uh grove lake 4-h here of pelican we um are applying for a cal milky grant uh it's due uh, uh april 1st now so i'm in the process of writing that i believe we're going to ask for she said aim high so i think we're going to ask for two thousand and our goal is it's to be used uh, amongst our 4-hers um for them as learning experience or teaching, things like that. So we would make some picnic tables. Our goal is to make some picnic tables and benches. <coughs> if we have any money left over, just paint like for some big, just get some old barrels and like paint them up, you know, right. like put Vikings on them or something, just things to add to the, and we think we have a good chance of getting quite a bit of that money because it's um, a multi-use building, the county, you know, everything like mm -hmm. that so as we write it we're yeah. hoping and it would be nice <coughs> to have extra picnic tables that we can leave there and not have to drag them <coughs> up by that because we do have some up by on the edge of the field that can it's amazing how they can use it. i think people really appreciate having that option of sitting over on the east or the north or the south side of the field um so that's basically basically it i think we turned out nice uh bhh uh the firm is the ones that have come up with our concept, we came up with the conceptual design. They take it a step farther and uh, they'll get it to the, the bidding process, which we will deal with <coughs> all the different trades to bid this building out. Um, so then we can uh, keep it on our, our timeline, keep it within budget. Um, our plan is to get that information out to contractors and bidders um, early April which is fast approaching, and then have numbers back by mid-April. And we would have a yay or nay by you guys um, sometime in there, early, early, I'm not sure when the April meeting is, or maybe it's early May. Um, <coughs> go ahead for it, and then start digging, or then we have to tear the other one down, and then start digging, so but we do host the section, the section, is that called? Okay, at uh, Lane 15 first. So that is a big week. And from what I've heard, that will be pretty commonplace for us to host that, uh, that meet plus tree team, maybe. At least one of those, maybe both of them every other year. So this facility <coughs> with those bathrooms like they are should really help accommodate. If you would have to be up there last year, uh, amazing how many people, but it was amazing how overwhelmed our whole facility was. Can you go back to that picture once you're going? <coughs> the sign that says Chansey Martin Field, is that yellow or orange? It's orange. Okay, good. No one yeah, it, it kind of, it's, and it is, it is the bright, you know, the, 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 sun the bright, bright orange, and we had the Pelican Rapids redone, or the Pelican Viking tickets uh, redone on it too. Like I said, we have to, we have the background for it, we have to uh, block the Trevor, one more. What about bike racks? Oh, good point. <coughs> um, we also were working with the 
city and the county mm -hmm. for bike racks. I would really like to see the, the van. What's the young lady that we're working with to the, the think about the schools that we got? Mallory. Mallory through? For Central Initiative. Uh, I'm familiar with Lenox Elementary has a spiral work to it. Mm -hmm. Nice. She was able to facilitate that for us and get it. And then that's what I picked it up from her and we remodeled that thing. It's worked really well. It's got a new look to it. So yeah, we would put those probably on the side because in the front you'd be walking up to that fence. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you look over to see the tennis court, you look over <coughs> to the pickleball courts, it'll be closer. One thing this building will do is accommodate people from Park Key right at the, the tennis courts. You know. And there are the also be, uh, a little lot to there will also be two repair stations. So the, yeah. the really nice thing to have the repair stations where inflatable and all the different tools. <coughs> There's one over by Veterans Park that I believe will be relocated. Uh, so there'll be two of those. So, so yeah, it will have all the accommodations for the trailhead, for our our needs, community needs, uh, Speedy Lake stuff. Um, so that's a cool one. Oh, I'm sorry, just one last question. So that's still going to be inside the fence? Correct. <laughs> yep. And then there'll just be a different entrance? Because is it now <coughs> just that yes. little slide yeah, through? We will okay. shift that entrance over about two posts. It's about 20 feet. Each post post about 10 feet. So we would close off that and just make that gap. And we're going to have to make it larger because we you know, people bringing a bike through and stuff like that. But um, yeah, we also have to make sure we keep bikes off our track <laughs> and other facilities up there. But, so it's kind of a catch-22. All right, any additional questions? Yeah. And I, when I ask this, um, you might think, why well, I, I should have brought it earlier, but just the visual you know, <coughs> of the the building looks great. I, I mean, obviously, it's going to be a great asset. I love how the city and the county and the school district are working together, along with other groups. You know, it's awesome. Is it is it too late to is it too late, and is it financially uh, doable? significantly compromising anything to, to make this larger in an effort to accommodate a space that be able to be utilized by students um, in the area for a gathering space. You know, I think of the warming house, for example. Um, I was whispering to Stacy a little bit here just a second ago. You know, I know Stacy's been working with some kids. I don't want to misrepresent what you've been doing, Stacy, but working with kids to try to find a location, you know, after a game or after an event or after a choir concert or after school for that matter, looking for a spot to gather. And it could be two ping pong tables and a couple booths with some sort of beverage opportunity or, or food opportunity on a base, very basic level. Is it, is it, and I get it if it is, and I apologize for not raising this, but I, it didn't really come to me until I saw the visual. Is it is it too late to consider making this larger in an effort to accommodate space for that, or to at least, with regard to the warming house, um, make that a space that even during kind of the non-skating sledding months that could be utilized for for youth in the area. Uh, that area probably could accommodate it more than anything. Um, it comes down to dollars. Yep. And when it gets bigger, you know, right now we are going to be touch and go if the weekend, if this is feasible, you know, of okay. course. Um, so we go bigger, dollar square foot. So from a financial perspective, <coughs> we're, trying to, we're, we're maximizing, we're about at maximum right now with regard to what's feasible at this point. Yes, and according to, um, we did a little, feasibility study. Um, <laughs> asking uh, contractors <laughs> to, uh, to build it. Um, local. Local, yeah. A local guy went around, talked to uh, electricians, contractors, and said, hey, according to this floor plan, what do you, just a number, what do you think it would take to do the electrical, to build it, to do this, that? And then um, we got a more comprehensive uh, people like BHH and they had their number which is a little higher than, than what ours is so hopefully we come in at ours and uh, and can do this but it's going to be a quality building. 
Um, Did you get the tables on a jukebox? And that <laughs> 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 maybe maybe beanbag. Maybe work. <laughs> So uh, what, I'm, what I'm understanding, though, and I, I get it, um, I thought I'd ask it, and I don't want to take much more of everyone's time here to discuss it, but what I'm hearing is financially, even with the, the collaboration the, with the county and the city, uh, from a school standpoint, from a financial perspective, we're, we're maximizing um, the dollars that we can at this point the best interest of, of the district. Yeah, yeah, we didn't, you know, it originally was 30 and then we went to 40 because of um, the other needs, uh, like the, the trailhead, they came with their wants and then the city with their wants with the learning house and then because initially it was just for, you know, the school, some, some better bathrooms so, and, and some better facilities like that, better concessions and actually a, a legit building with pick of sales instead of a trail. Um, and then everybody started coming to us, which was good, because usually it happens after the fact. And now we're able to do it, but um, yeah, we are stretching those dollars really, really far. Thank you. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Steve. All right, Sean, do you want me to hand over the reins? Go ahead, we're on item C. Okay. <laughs> All right, Mr. Nelson, how about an elementary principal lady report? <coughs> Enrollment, we're at 429, which we started September 429. Uh, enrollment's the same, but in that we've had, I think, 42 <laughs> ads and 42 drops throughout the year. And that's just, uh, that's a typical year for us, that we have that many families coming in and out. Uh, like our sixth grade class started at 51, then up to 55. Seems like we can never predict what grade people are going to come in. You know, so they've been up to 28 in a room. Um, we can predict what class people are coming in to make their life easier, but we can't. Um, the goal was to have 90% attendance for conferences. We had 93%, and it was not the best day. So we really thank the parents uh, for coming in on a, another snowy day. Um, we did have some that were done virtually because of the weather and thank the teachers for going above and beyond to making those connections with the parents as well. Title night was moved one week due to weather and they had over 50 kids show up for their sledding night and a lot of fun was had by all that evening. Uh, kindergarten registration just opened I think about a week or two ago. We've already got 44 students as of last Friday that are registered. Um, an initial kickoff there. Curriculum, we've been working the last two years with Lakes Country Co-op, working with Todd and Anna and our instructional leadership team. And we've been talking about that we have picked a new math curriculum for next year. And so it's a two-part process because we are getting the new series of bridges that is just coming out the third edition. Uh, their, their number corner we will get next year and then the following year their the regular curriculum part of it that comes out that fall. So both of them will be the brand new editions. We did not want to get a um, second edition that might not be supported in a couple years with all the technical changes and our teachers are very happy about next year starting with their number corner and then the following year the regular curriculum so they'll have one thing in place and get familiar with part of the curriculum and then add to it the following year. Um, starting next year we are looking at the our language arts and writing curriculums and we will go through the same process working with Todd and Anna on um, our language arts and writing curriculums. So looking forward to that. Um, Found out this morning <coughs> that we had multiple winners for the Shrine Circus Drawing Contest at the elementary. And we actually have the overall champion at the elementary. So that was uh, an email this morning. And all the people that won will get free tickets to the 
Shrine Circus that evening for their families, as well as bikes for all the people that won um, the different age levels. So we had kindergartners all the way up to sixth graders winning. I think we had five or six different winners at Viking Elementary. So they will be announced tomorrow. So congratulations to all of them. Uh, activities. Um, hire Nicole Herbinson as assistant softball coach. And congratulations to Jed Carlson, Danny Salazar, Jackson Peasley, Mark Kapenga, and Jack Kapenga on making it to the state wrestling tournament. Um, great accomplishment for those five. And then we're starting to look for nominations for our Hall of Fame. So Blue, could you help us by putting a little plug sure. in the paper again? Um, we will be making our selections in uh, May, and then we kind of spend the summer collecting information from the people that are selected so we can get ready for our Hall of Fame banquet, which we do not know the date of, because we do not know the date of homecoming, because we do not have a football schedule, which we won't until probably June, dealing with the district or the district and sections realignment. They uh, lined those up a couple years ago, so at this time we have no dates for football. Uh, our football schedule will probably look different to the teams that have been on our um, schedule. I just found out are going nine man. Underwood and OTC both will be playing nine man next year, so there will be some changes to our um, district and to our schedule. But again, we won't know that for a while. So, questions? Questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next up, Laura. I the report still says February. Yes, it still looks like February. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, enrollment for us is steady at 408, same as what it was in February. Today we had um, staff development. We started with Derek Francis, finishing up our diversity and cultural training for our staff. Uh, we had department meetings today. Some of those filtered into our curriculum cycle meetings, just really trying to firm up our course offering plannings. Um, we also did a master schedule review and just some input. I sent out a rough draft to staff for them to get an idea of if there's some conflicts that they noticed. We went through that today. We had PLCs, and then as I mentioned, we had curriculum cycle meetings, um, art, music, bi ed, and health, and social studies are at the end of their um, two years, so next year they'll be in full implementation of their standards, ready to go. Egg science, business, <coughs> industrial tech just finished their first year, and in first year, they're really just putting in their standards, kind of seeing um, what they're hitting, what they're missing. And then math and science will be starting this next year. Theirs has continued to kind of be put on hold. Science will start some new standards next year. Math is supposed to start new st standards in a couple of years. So those ones we are just kind of starting. But math will also be expanding a software that they tried this past year and seem to really like. It's gonna create addition for students to get some more diversified um, homework for them. Next week is Wellness Week at the high school with some really fun activities for our staff. Um, after school group fitness activities, healthy snack samples, some massages, wellness bingo board, a team competition, and then they also get to do a individual wellness assessment that I actually got from Jordan Solheim. It'll look at eight different facets of wellness, financial, um, mental, physical, I forget some of the other components, spiritual. But it'll just be an assessment for them to take on their own and kind of help direct what they want to focus on their bingo board. Bruce Wold is a retired school counselor and will come in to fill in for Mrs. Lage during her maternity leave. He will start April 4th. So for the next couple of weeks, we are without a counselor and I'm hoping Mr. Bruin and I can crutch through that while we wait. Um, but he'll be in the office Tuesdays through Fridays once he comes until Ms. Lage returns on May 15th. Um, build learning, build trust, build success, just some fun things that have gone on this last month. We had juniors take the ACT on March 7th. Janae LaFerrier, 
Sylvia Pesch and Eva Rustand um, had their all-state band experience at Orchestra Hall. We had our <coughs> business students tour late shirts, and then actually um, on Wednesday, our business and industrial tech students will go over to Perm to visit um, Arvig, KLN, and I'm missing one more. We're gonna go to three different spots in Perm. Um, Mr. Peter has moved on to be a Minnesota Teacher of the Year semi-finalist, so congratulations to him. Saturday was Celebrations of Cultures, led by Mrs. Thompson and some of our students. We had our winter and band choir concerts finally take place after some rescheduling. NHS sponsored a blood drive on March 17th, and I think I saw that they had 24 um, donors that day. Tri-College Math Contest was really good to our 7th and 8th graders. They were both champions. Um, Grady Larson placed <coughs> first, and Brenner Fredrickson tied for second, so some really great results there. Upcoming events, you'll see that we're starting to plan for graduation. Tomorrow, senior privileges start. April 6th to the 10th is spring break, and then we've got a few dates there to look forward to for our seniors. Any questions? Questions? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are our student board representatives ready to present? Yeah. Okay. I can start. Um, a few weeks ago, students from Pierre Quest business education classes toured the lecture facilities in DL. Students learned about opportunities available in a wide variety of careers, including finance, marketing human resources and manufacturing. They also learned about the unique work culture at Lakeshirts. And last week, FFA competed at a regional competition with the Dairy Cattle team uh, performing especially well. They are in second place in their event and will go on to compete at the state FFA convention in April. And then this past Friday, NHS held a, sp a spring blood drive of successful in collecting 24 pints of blood. MHS members volunteered by helping with setup and takedown, manning the refreshment table, and assisting donors with the check in process. Mm, I was just going to touch on Mr. Brigham's funeral for winter last week <laughs> at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, on Thursday, we wore gray and black as we celebrated our remembered his passing, and then on Friday we celebrated the spring and summer and dressed accordingly in summer outfits, and then also had <coughs> bingo on Friday at the end of the day, which was fun. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Mr. Martinez, you up next? Wonderful. Finance report for the month end of February. Uh, overall, again, pretty good month for the school district. Uh, we started our investment account with $5.5 million. Uh, we've ended with $5.5 million. Uh, very steady uh, in stream of cash coming in um, and also uh, projecting very well expenditures. Uh, total deposits in our checking accounts were just a little shy of a million dollars. Accounts payable was $678,000, while payroll was $886,000. Um, so with leaving cash in hand, about a thousand bucks. But then again, we have everything automatic that it pulls directly from our investment account to make sure that we meet all of our obligations. Any questions regarding our cash flow statement for the month of February? All right, uh, moving on to the second page. You're going to see lots of journal entries, and <coughs> those journal entries, again, are uh, corrections just to make sure that we start to clean up our books. Um, so over the next couple months, you're going to start to see significant journal entries, and that is going to be tied to all the new finance goals that the state is retiring and bringing in, um, especially with all the legislative sessions happening regarding all the uh, all of the things that are happening down at the Capitol. So you're going to see lots of those fun journal entries there. And then the last page is like always with all of our payables. So if you have any questions on those invoices, please 
feel free to reach out to me and Mr. Corp, and I'll be happy to provide you uh, any any supporting documentation that you need uh, regarding those variables. Uh, that's kind of what we have. Uh, we, like I said, we are in full force of uh, budgeting, so uh, finance committee met, and uh, we are looking at all aspects of our budget, start putting together the preliminary budget that we bring to the board eventually. Uh, and then the next final big piece will be just May, where we have our last levy payment for the fiscal year, and then we start cleaning up our books, start getting ready for audit. So that's all that I have for you guys. Again, any questions, feel free to shoot them our way. Lots of lots of great things happening down at the Capitol. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So, any questions for Rudy? Okay. Thanks. Mr. Corr, Superintendent Report. Okay, the first item I'm going to start with is the master calendar for next year that's on the agenda. Um, if you take a look at the calendar that you have, um, really it's very similar to last year. Um, starting after um, Labor Day weekend, and then um, we will have a workshop in August. Start school September 5th. <coughs> this past year, we had a half day on that uh, day before break. This year, we will have a full day, um, what we are have on the calendar in December. Um, like this year, we had first three snow days are built-in days. You don't have to make them up. But days four through eight would be e-learning. So exact same uh, way that we did it this year. Overall, heard positive feedback from staff um, with how everything worked. Um, we do have, like this past year, some days throughout the year for staff, uh, workshop days for staff to work in their departments, uh, PLCs, uh, grade level planning, things like that, grades. Um, giving them time throughout the year to work um, with other staff or in their own classrooms. In May, which is gonna be nice if we get this approved tonight, so then parents that have seniors next year for graduation, they know the graduation date. Um, the last day of school would be on May 22nd. May 23rd would be the teacher work day, and then May 24th would be graduation, and that would be at 7 p.m. So very similar uh, to this past year, just a couple different um, changes that I mentioned. Uh, input from staff, so the building administration uh, <coughs> talked, worked with their staff, staff had input on this, um, each building. Um, so staff talked to their leadership team, leadership team met with the uh, admin, building principals, and then they talked about what they would like to see with the calendar. That's how the calendar is created. Okay, my next item on my report, uh, educator well-being and resilience session. We had number five, the admin completed session number five, and that was focusing on exploring available resources um, to use. Um, between now and session number six, which is in May, we are going to be looking at different resources and discuss ideas to implement for next school year. Um, Building administrators talked about some plans that they have in place here for the next few weeks. Um, some, some activities, staff activities, um, especially now that uh, spring has not started yet, um, it's gonna be nice timing for those activities. Third item that I have on my list, um, I wanna talk about policy first. Um, 205 is on the agenda, that's the second reading. It's open meetings and closed meetings. Um, we did the first screen at the last board meeting. So this will be the second reading of policy 205. The purpose of 205 is to provide guidelines to assure the rights of the public to be present at school board meetings while also protecting an individual's rights to pri privacy under law and, and the closed meetings when the public interest so requires as recognized by law. So that is the purpose of 205. Next item is the seniority list. Seniority list is a yearly approval. Uh, the list was shared with certified staff. Certified staff had the opportunity to look at it to make sure that if, if they had any questions or concerns, they would contact Mrs. Evanson. List of certified staff um, is, or the seniority list is a list of certified staff who are full-time. 
that's the list. Title and access positions were at the bottom of that list. If we were ever to make reductions, we would use this list to uh, help guide us with reductions where needed. So this is the purpose of the CW list. Okay. Next item is um, finance committee report, and the finance committee can uh, join in um, when I'm done here. And just a few things with the finance committee met last <coughs> week. We talked about our budget, current budget, our um, what we see, the forecast of our budget, and staffing. And um, before that meeting, the finance committee meeting, the administrator had meetings to discuss staffing for next year, programming, what they'd like to see in each building. And we made a list and uh, we went to the finance committee. We recommended, the admin team was recommending to the finance committee that if, if possible, we'd like to add a 1.0 FTE elementary teacher. Um, when you look at our numbers, we have one grade that's at 51 for next year. That's what currently is, and that's third grade right now. So next year, um, in fourth grade, if we would stay with two teachers, that means we'd have a class size of 26, 25. With a three section for that grade, we would have 17 in that class. Um, 26, 25, admins talked about the borderline number for an additional teacher. And why do we say borderline? Because we don't know, like Mr. Nelson talked about, with his enrollment, how many students have come in and and left. We don't know if students are going to be coming in. If they come in and it's late August, what do you do? And if you have to add a teacher, it's a lot of stress on that grade level, on Mr. Nelson, um, and the new teacher. There's a lot to learn, a lot to do. So what we like to do is, um, looking at the budget forecast, um, we feel we're going to be above the fund balance policy of 25% uh, next year. Smaller class sizes is going to be better for student learning and help teacher meet the needs of their students. Um, so what we like to do is our admin and our finance committee agreed that uh, recommendation would move forward to the school board meeting tonight to um, approve a 1.0 FTE elementary teacher, which would be at the fourth grade level. Finance committee, Mr. Nelson, anything else that I missed you want to add? Well, right now, fourth grade has three teachers, fifth grade has three, sixth grade has two, but the sixth grade class coming in will be the upper 50s. So, <coughs> looking so we'd have kindergarten, first, second, have four sections, third, fourth, fifth, sixth would have three sections for next year. And I think the other thing we looked at was the last couple of years, we want to really shift the teacher around yeah. the grades, and that gets kind of tough on the instructor. So yeah. we can do it. That's, that's what I want to do. Right now, so. From a fiscal aspect, um, we have significant reserves to uphold the additional cost of an FTE, taking into assumptions all the different changing factors. Again, these are all assumptions and preliminary predictions where we predicted a conservative 2% funding formula increase with an inflation of 3% of all the additional expenses. So anything, if legislatively, if we settled on anything more than 2%, it's an additional win for the school district. Um, and again, we are in full compliance with um, our fund, fund balance, plan balance policy, and we can sustain our particular FTEs for many, many years to come.
so sixth grade, the one section got up to be 28 this year. Mm -hmm. That's the largest mm -hmm. that Class. since I've been at the elementary. Now with COVID and distance learning, we had all sorts of different situations mm -hmm. there as well. But um, that's been the largest, okay. the sixth grade. Okay. Well, thanks. Any other questions? Move on. <coughs> we move on to consent items, item seven. So item A, approved board meeting minutes, February 15th, 2023, regular meeting. B, financial claims and February bills. C, the treasurer's report. D, accept donations. We have student accounts, $80, Laura Clinic. Viking Boutique, $80, Laura Clinic. Falcon Rapids FFA in memory of Ruben and Anna Peterson, $2,000. That's from Skip King, or King's Ace Hardware. Uh, Celebration of Cultures, $50. Falcon Rapids Pool Hall Incorporated. Celebration of Cultures, $200. Bruce Pierce. PRHS Scholarship Fund, fund in memory of Judy King, $10 anonymous. And item E, personnel, approve the hire of Chet Justin, part-time custodian at the high school. Approve the hi hire of Nicole Herbertson as junior high softball coach. Approve the hire of Bruce Wald as PRHS counselor, long-term substitute. Item F, approve the following lane change requests. Uh, Denise Borgen, BA to BA plus 10. Yes. Uh, Abby Mooney, MA plus MA plus 10. What's the SMA? Semester. Semester, okay. All right. Charlotte Setter, BA to BA plus 10. Semester. Cody Schaefer, MA to MA plus 10. And semester. And here, do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Stacy. Second. Second. Second by Ann. Discussion on the consent items. Mr. Carter, can I add one thing? Yes. On the hire of Chet uh, Justin for the part time custodial, we had a full time evening at the high school that um, resigned earlier this year and we replaced him with a student. And now, with his hours and Chet's hours, it would still not equal the hours, total hours of that full time. Still would be less and still cheaper in wages too. So we're saving some money. Okay. So Mr. Steves is still <coughs> looking for somebody full time. But they're just filling in those two. Okay. And every time we do the consent items, there's always all these donations and I guess I was thinking that we don't thank them enough, you know, publicly with the folks that donate to us. Some of the donations we accept are pretty sizable. Mm -hmm. so. Any other discussion on consent items? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of approving the consent items signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed saying, the consent items carry. Moving on to business items, item A, approve the 23-24 master calendar. Do we have a motion? I make a motion to approve the 2023-2024 master calendar. Motion by Brenda. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Molly. Any discussion on the calendar? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of approving the 23-24 calendar signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same. Motion carries. B, approve the 20, 2023 final seniority list. We have a motion for that. I'll make a motion to approve the 2023 final seniority list. A motion by Ann. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Stacy. Any discussion on the final seniority list? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of approving the 23 final seniority list signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same. Seniority list carries. C, approve the addition of a 1.0 FTE elementary teacher. Do we have a motion? I'll 
I'll move for that. Yeah. Motion by Greg. We have a second to yeah. approve the <laughs> one point oh F E elementary teacher. All right. I'll second. Second by Molly. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor are approving the addition of a 1.0 FTE signified by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Those opposed, same. Motion carries. Approve the second reading of policy 205. Make a motion to approve the second reading of policy 205. Motion by Ann. Do you have a second? I'll second. Stacy. Any discussion on the second reading of policy 205? Hearing no discussion. All those in favor of approving the second reading of policy 205 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same. Motion carries. Item E, approve the achievement of integration plan. Do you have a motion? I'll make them. I'll wait. No, go ahead. So we'll move for that one, too. So we'll move Greg. I second. Greg makes the motion. Brenda seconds. Okay. Any discussion? I, I do have one. Sorry, I can't stop the questions mm -hmm. when they roll okay. through my brain. Um, it, in our um, packet, it did have approve the A and I budget, um, and then we have the integration plan. So I'm I'm just wondering, just for transparency, what. Um, our budget is there, or how many, how much funds we do receive for the ANI? Sorry, it was no, a, that was a typo <laughs> that, I, that I had brought forth. Um, yeah, good question. <coughs> we, I believe we already did the budget this year, if I'm not mistaken. Greg? Uh, correct. So, uh, achievement <coughs> integration again was a program that started in 2007 by Minnesota legislation that gives close to about $300 per pupil unit in which our school district uh, gets in the ballpark between $170,000 give or take in a year, depending on fluctuation of students. All that money, again, it's allocated for educational purposes based on the strategies that we write. Uh, in our particular case, we allocate the majority of that budget, again, for economic purposes, providing the majority of the funds for uh, ESL teachers to continue to integrate students into with multiple diverse backgrounds into the mainstream society. Uh, and also uh, for our READ 180 program at the high school where it the funds the majority of Mrs. Corr's uh, position. And again, that serves in our entire diverse community to, uh, to continue to achieve that, uh, or to continue to achieve that achievement gap for our students. So that is where the majority of our achievement integration goes into it. Regarding the background of funding, 70% comes from state aid and 30% comes from levy dollars. Thank you. Yeah. And the plan itself is a working document. So that's why I heard Mr. Bergman just want to say. So they need to make changes with schools or setting goals that will change. And then they do amendments to it. Okay. That's what I just wanted to bring that. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing no other discussion, all those in favor of approving the achievement integration plan signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same. Motion carries. We have some upcoming meetings. Uh, April 19th, 2023, the regular meeting, and May 17th, 2023, regular meeting. The graduation is May 26th. Mrs. Jasleski, is that correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. She's excited. 